I've been dissecting this game for some time, and at last, now it's time to share what I've found when it comes to modding The Last of Us and Naughty Dog games in general. The following tutorials are for people who already know how to transfer files between PS3 and a PC or use an emulator. This is not going to explain how to exploit a PS3 for modding, but how to mod the game for people that already know how PS3 games work. But if you're watching it just cause, I hope you can be entertained. The easiest way I've found to mod the game is by modifying the game's latest patch. If you modify any file from the base game and place it inside the patch, it will read the file from the patch. Meaning there's no need to overwrite files in the base game. If you place a file in the patch, it will always read from the patched file. Files that are loaded from patches also do not cache, making it extremely convenient not to have to clear cache after you make changes. It also makes it extremely easy to revert all backups, such as if the file wasn't in the patch before, just delete it and changes are reverted. In order to get modding to work, we first need to go to the base games directory and locate the files pack 23 psarc and actor 34 psarc. All the models and map files are located inside these psarc files. What you'll need to do is extract pack 23 psarc and actor 34 psarc. Once you've got pack 23 and actor 34 extracted into folders of the same name, what you'll want to do is go ahead and rename the original psarc files to something else. I normally name it original. You can call it backup, it doesn't really matter, but as long as you change the name of the original file, the game should ignore these and then only read from the folders, such as. Next up, we install the patch and then set that up for modding. This is what the patch directory looks like. What we're going to do is the same step as the base game. We're going to take patch1.psarc extract it. When it's extracted, it goes into a folder of the same name as usual. Then we rename the PSARC to something else. And there, your game is ready to be meddled with. These steps are necessary because what I found is leaving the files compressed and trying to mod an uncompressed patch, the game will have errors allocating memory and fail to load but with everything extracted it just runs smoothly and makes it a hell of a lot easier to actually get things to work. To reiterate, anything edited here will go into the corresponding folder in the patch. So if I edit an actor here, it would go into actor 34 in the patch. If I edit pack 23, anything from here, it would go into the pack 23 patch file. But keep this in mind, if you ever have to edit pack23.txt, always edit the pack23.txt from the patch. If you edit the one from the base game and put it into the patch, the game will crash. So make sure only edit the pack23.txt from the patch. But now that that's all explained, let's start with the most simple mod you can do. The most important file included in the game is pack23.txt. This file lists every single map, animation, character, prop, and when they're loaded during the game. Here is an example of a level listing in pack23.txt. So, this is for the Billstown test map. If this level is loaded, it'll find it in pack23 by using this ID. Then the packages below are the map itself, which it will load. Then underneath the packages are the actors. These include animations, models, props, and symbols, which include render settings. So if Billstown test map was ever called, it would load it by identifying it here, loading the map packages, and then loading the actors and symbols. If you've played around with the debug menu, you would notice that the player one option to spawn Joel doesn't seem to work throughout most of the game. That's because the listings for char level Joel are not loaded into memory throughout most of the game, so thus Joel cannot spawn. We can easily fix this by adding Joel's models into the game where they aren't normally loaded. For example, let's say we want to load Joel's default outfit and all his weapons during Pittsburgh. 
Every single chapter in the game has a world file. Example, World Hunter City is used for Pittsburgh and is loaded at all times during that chapter. If we find this listing in pack23.txt, you'll see that there are no actors listed underneath. So this is where we will add a list of actors to be loaded into memory during this chapter. I've made a handy list of all of Joel's default files and the weapons. And if we copy this list and place it underneath the listing for World Hunter City, these models will be loaded into the game during Hunter City, Pittsburgh. Hit save, boot the game into Pittsburgh, toggle player one, and there we go. Now we have Joel spawned with all his firearms. Pack23.txt is a very powerful yet simple file. If something is not listed in there, it will never load, so it's good to know how it works to start with. Another simple example of Pack23 modding is instead of loading actors, we can change what maps are loaded instead. Now the current task I am on here is Mill Exterior Beyond the Wall. There does exist an early, unfinished version of this map in the game called Mill City Beyond the Wall Test. Now there are two main maps loaded here that I want to replace. This one I'm in right now is Mill City Beyond the Wall Start Interior and outside is Mill City Beyond the Wall Start. A good way to find what maps and models are currently loaded in the game is to use the debug menu, go to the memory submenu, and then dump loading heap page allocations. And then it will give you a list in your debugger showing all the background objects loaded and the foreground objects loaded, which are the actors. So these are the packages and these are the actors. So if we search through pack23.txt, we can see the interior packages are listed here, the other package is listed here, and the test package is listed here. Since we're replacing two maps with one map, all we have to do is remove the package for one of the maps and then take the package listings for the test map and simply replace the package listing for the interior map. It's just a simple way to tell the game, hey, don't load this package, load this package instead. Next, all we got to do is save the file, put it back into the game, and then load straight back into the same checkpoint. And if we've done it correctly, we've successfully changed which map the game loads at this part of the game. Pretty much every listing in pack 23 boils down to this is the listing ID, load these packages with a maximum of two, and load these actors. It is a very simple file, but it is really important when you want to load any kind of asset in game or have anything work. It needs to be loaded and it needs to be listed. And that was a very basic introduction to modding The Last of Us. These methods also work with the Uncharted series and they also work with the PS4 versions, although the PS4 versions have a different file layout, but the idea is the same. In the description, I have a link to a Discord server that I've created with a whole bunch of other modders and a lot of documentation of what I've found in The Last of Us so far. So if you want to join in and help like disassemble this game, then uh, check the link in the description below. Coming up next, we'll be discussing modifying NPCs, modifying weapons, and pretty much anything you suggest. I'll make a video on it. So thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.